I shot him dead. I killed him. Why did I kill him? Because he is my foe. Thomas Hardy O.M. was an English novelist and poet. Write many a nipperkin. Nipperkin means a small quantity of drinks taken at once. Irony is a figure of speech in which words are used in such a way that their intended meaning is different from the actual meaning. Hello everyone, this is Shobita S. Aradhya, lecturer, Department of English, Vidyashram First Grade College, Mysoro, the temple of excellence. A warm welcome to you all. Today we are going to discuss another poem, The Man He Killed. Here, this is an imagination of the poet where he imagines that if he is in the war field, he would have killed the enemy though he is of his same kind or who has come to serve his country. So whatever may be his situations, if it is the war field, I will kill him. And if it is not the war field, if in the other times, if he needs anything, any kind of help, maybe money or any kind of help, the poet would be ready to help. But when it comes to the war field, he is his foe. So let us go in detail about this poem, The Man He Killed. So this is written by Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy, O.M. Now, as usual, as we do in every class, let us start with the poet. Let us see who is the poet, what has he done. Thomas Hardy O.M. was an English novelist and poet. So, he has written novel and poems both. He is a novelist and poet, a Victorian realist in the tradition of George Eliot. So, Victorian period when George Eliot was writing. So, he belonged to that tradition, the tradition in which George Eliot used to write. He was influenced both in his novels and his poetry by romanticism. So, he was influenced by romanticism. The same he carried for his both poems and novels. In his poetry, we can see romanticism, including the poetry of William Wordsworth. He was influenced by William Wordsworth also. So we can see glimpses of all these in the poems and novels written by Thomas Hardy. His other poems are The Darkling Thrush, The Oxen, Neutral Tones. These are the other poems which are popular written by Thomas Hardy. And the short stories which he has written which are popular are Far From the Madding Crown, Jude the Obscure, the Return of the Native. These are some of his short stories which are popular. So this is Thomas Hardy. Next we will see the title. Why has he given this title to this poem? The poem is The Man He Killed. So the poem begins with the hypothetical that the speaker and the man meet up in some old ancient inn. Inn means a restaurant. Okay, so here hypothetical means which is an imagination. So he starts giving imagination where he and the other person, they meet up, the man they, whom he killed, they met up in, in an ancient restaurant. Because the title is the man he killed, the readers can assume that the speaker is referring to the death or the man he killed. So, he tells that the, the speaker has killed somebody, a person. So, he is writing about that. So, title itself tells us that here a man is killed by the speaker. He is giving a hypothetical to help the readers to understand the humanity of each of them. So, through his poem, he is trying to tell what is humanity of each of them. What would the other person who was killed would have done or why did he do like this. So, he is stressing on humanity also. Now, the theme, the theme of the man he killed poem by Thomas Hardy is the distortion of good and generous impulses by war. The impulses and distortions which were caused by war. Distortion means which is not clear. So, it is the distortions of good and 
general impulses by war what war can do war can cause death or problems distractions but here the poet is telling trying to tell us about the good things that war has brought or the generous and generous impulses which are created by war this is illustrated as a speaker describes his natural sympathy for the man he killed so here he tries to tell that he had sympathy for the man he killed it was naturally that he has sympathy for that man but why did he kill because he is his enemy in the war field so he has killed the man saying that he was probably down on his luck so he tells that in war it can be him or the enemy who will be killed so if the enemy has targeted properly or at the aim this person the speaker would have died but this time it was luck of the speaker that he killed the enemy he killed the other man so he is telling maybe this time that man who was killed was down on his luck he did not have the luck that day so he died if i uh, did not have the luck i would have killed by the person so this is the theme of this poem the man he killed these are the lines of the poem had he and i but met by some old ancient inn we should have sat us down to wet right many a nipper kin see the poem starts with had he and i met so if means here it is imagination imagination of the poet and you should observe here same sound h sound that is the uh, usage of alliteration here the figure of speech alliteration is used had he and i but met if we would have met where in an ancient inn in any old ancient inn and what were they doing there we should have sat us down to wet sat us down to wet means to have some drinks right many a nipperkin nipperkin means a small quantity of drinks taken at once uh, usually it is small quantity of beer taken so he is telling right many a nipperkin nipperkin means a small quantity so only he is telling right many a nipperkin so he is telling so in this stanza the poet is telling if i and the man whom i killed would have met in a hotel in a and we were sat down for wet so if we are drinking and how would we do we would take a small quantity every time bit by bit or by uh, sipping it with a small quantity we would have sat in a restaurant but ranged as infantry and staring face to face i shot at him as he at me and killed him in his place so he is telling here infantry means the equipments of the uh, army or the military okay but raised as infantry we were ready to fight staring face to face what they were doing they were facing staring face to face both were looking at their faces the killer the speaker was facing the man the man was facing staring at the speaker i shot at him as he at me so both they started firing speaker also shot and the man also shot at him but what happened and killed him in his place so he is in his territory and the speaker is in his territory from here he shot him and the man was killed killed him in his place he did not cross the boundary or he did not cross his limits but speaker also he was in his boundary from here he shot and killed the person so here you should understand that the poet is comparing the war field to the table where they sit in a restaurant okay so in an inn if they sit uh, on the table opposite to each other so how will they sit how will they look at uh, each other that is similar to the war field here so he is comparing to the war field where two people or the two nation uh, uh, soldiers will be fighting facing each other staring at each other and continuously shoot each other to kill the enemy okay so here we should understand for the man speaker is the enemy and to the speaker the man is the enemy so this is about the second stanza in the poem 
Third stanza, I shot him dead because, because he was my foe. Just so, my foe of course he was. That's clear enough although. Here, as I said, to the speaker, the man was the enemy and to the man, the speaker was the enemy. Foe means enemy. I shot him dead. I killed him. Why did I kill him? Because he is my foe. Who will let the enemy to live their life in the war field? So enemy has to be killed only then we can safeguard our country. Correct? So he is telling I shot him dead because, because he was my foe. Because he was my enemy. Just so my foe of course he was. So I was enemy to him and in the same way he was my enemy. So I killed. That's clear enough although. So this is enough, this matter, that we both are enemies, we both are foe. That is enough to kill the man. Next, he thought he'd list perhaps offhand like just as I was out of work, had sold his traps, no other reason why. Now, in the fourth stanza, the poet, he tries to bring out the reality. What is the reality? He thought he would list perhaps offhand like just as I. So he would have joined his uh, job with the same circumstances which I had. Like I did not have money. I wanted to earn money. I was supposed to sell my belongings. So I joined the job in the same circumstances or with the same uh, background. The My foe, the man would have joined his job. So, But though I know that he is having same problems at home. As I have, I have to kill him because this is war field. So here, was out of work, had sold his traps. Here, he might also have sold his traps or belongings as I did when I was in trouble. Traps means here, the belongings. Okay. No other reason why. Then why else will he join to this job of killing same people or similar people? Yes, quaint and curious war is. You shoot a fellow down, you treat if met where any bar is or help to half a crown. So he is telling or he is comparing again. In the war field, nobody is friend and it's just killing of the foe. Here he says, yes, quaint and curious war is. War is complete waste. It is wastefulness of everything, time, money and life. Very importantly, life. It, was, it is wastefulness of all this, you shoot a fellow down. There you shoot, you kill a fellow down. But if you meet the same person, you would treat if met where any bar is. If you treat the same person in any bar, how would you do? You would share your drinks. You would talk to him. You would share whatever you have. If he needs some money, you would have given him if it was a bar. But what is it? It is war, not bar. So, this is how the poet has brought out the comparison between the war field and the thinking of a person when he is in war field and when he is outside. So this is what the theme of the poem is. This is what the poet has tried to bring out in his poem. The man he killed. If it was not the war field, this person, the speaker would have not killed the man. Why has he killed the man? Because it is war filled. If they met somewhere in the bar, they would have exchanged their talks, thoughts and would have shared their drinks also. But as it is war filled, he had to kill and he has killed. So this is about the poem. Now we will see some of the poetic devices used in this poem. Assonance, as you already know, assonance means the repetition of vowel sound in a poem. Like... Uh, example, the sound of U is used in you shoot a fellow down. So here you and shoot. In both these words, U sound is long, O sound is repeated. This is called as assonance. The repetition of vowel sound in a line is called as assonance. Then alliteration, it is repetition of the same sound. Here, for example, the sound of H is repeated. It should be in a quick succession. Had 
he in the first line when i i started the first stanza i told you had he so in the quick succession first word also starts with h second word also starts with h and the sound of h is same the, it is not silent in both the places we pronounce h as h had he so this is called alliteration then consonants it is the repetition of consonant sound in the line uh, the example for it is the sound of f my fo of course okay fo of course in both this f sound is repeated f in is a consonant and the sound of n the sound of n in these lines arranged in fun tree okay so n sound is repeated thrice arranged in fun tree in these words n sound is repeated n is a consonant so we call it as consonants okay next enjambment enjambment means here a thought in verse that does not come to an end at a line break so when the line ends it do not stop here the thought of the verse or thought is continued to the next line also that is known as enjambment and example for that is you shoot a fellow down so it is not complete here you treat if met where any bar is so it is not complete here it goes to the next line also or help to half a crown so in these two lines it doesn't end in the beginning itself or at the end of the line it continues to the next line also this is known as enjambment means the thought crosses the first word or do not end at the first line it goes to the next line also somewhere in the middle it completes so this is known as enjambment next is imagery imagery is used to make readers perceive things involving their five senses okay hearing speaking or smell and touch okay all these are used all the five senses example for this is had he and i but met so here if they would have met it is the imagination they would have seen each other okay sense of seeing is used here i shot at him as he at me so again at the look at the sound from where he has shot so both he uh, hearing and seeing sense is used here you shoot a fellow down so again the sense of seeing is used here so these are the poetic devices used then one more is irony irony is a figure of speech in which words are used in such a way that their intended meaning is different from the actual meaning so what they mean is is completely different from the word okay it will be contrast to the word such words when it is used in the poem it is called irony the poet has used ironic expressions in the first stanza of the poem to demonstrate the fact that he would not kill the man if they had met in a bar so he is telling if we met in the bar i would have not killed him but as it was the war field i killed him if it was in the bar he would share his drinks or share his thoughts share even his money half crown means whatever he has he would have share it with the man symbolism symbolism is a use of symbols to signify ideas and qualities by giving them symbolic meanings so these symbolic meanings will be different from their literal meanings see this irony and symbolism they seem to be same but there is lot of difference here in irony it means completely different okay in symbolism it is different to the literal meaning here war symbolizes senselessness so if war is fought there will be some sense correct so it will be a long fight when they could not solve it only then war begins but here it is said senselessness war is senselessness so this is the contrast brought here in symbolism okay so these are the poetic uh, devices used in the poem the man he killed to conclude the man he killed first published in 1902 has a message that that is timeless this message is timeless this fight within us within a human is common it no, need not to be the war when we have any problem with somebody we treat them as enemy and we should think if he 
has uh, difference of opinion in any one matter only then we should treat like him but otherwise when it is the other matter other concept we need to treat him as friend we need to share everything with him so th so that is why this poem is timeless though it was written in 20th century beginning of 20th century but it is timeless till today it is relevant its subject matter is the curious nature of war that allows for such behavior as killing a man with whom under more mundane circumstances you would sit sharing drinks so this is what he is trying if it was not war the poet would have shared the things what he has but as it is the war what he did he just shoot him without of uh, thinking of any feelings without any prejudice he just kill the enemy so this is the poem the man he killed so in the next session i'll come up with another poem and uh, we'll enjoy the session till then take care bye bye and thank you